This is the FlipNerd.com Expert Real Estate Investing Show, the show for real estate investors. Whether you're a veteran or brand new, I'm your host, Mike Hambright, and each week I bring you a new expert guest that will share their knowledge and lessons with you. If you're excited about real estate investing, believe in personal responsibility, and taking control of your life and financial destiny, you're in the right place. This is episode number 366, and my guest today is Holly McCann, aka Hard Hat Holly. Holly is a Southern California investor and a networking expert. In fact, she's purchased hundreds of deals without spending a penny on advertising, as she relies almost completely on finding deals through networking with others. Today, we talk about how you too can find deals through networking and several different tips and tricks and the best places for you to start. This is a great topic in a powerful way to do more profitable deals without a hefty advertising expense pulling you down. Please help me welcome Holly to the show. Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, good to see you again. I was I was just, uh, everybody that's listening, I was just telling Holly, Holly's been on the show before and uh, we, we've seen each other a few times and we talk periodically and Holly's been on our other podcast, the uh, REI Classroom. Um, but the last time she was on this show, I couldn't believe it. It was episode number 174. And that was uh, February of 2015. It's hard to believe. I had to do the math in my head. That's uh, that's nearly two and a half years ago. That's a long time ago. Lots yeah. Since then, that's huh? like a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> in this industry, that is a lifetime of two and a half yes. years. So um, awesome. Well, I'm excited to talk about networking and honestly, everything that I teach uh, students that I coach or anybody that I ever teach about real estate investing. I talk about the importance of building your network, building relationships. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not, there's really two reasons, right? And I'll let you, I don't want to steal your thunder at all because I know you're you're the queen bee on this stuff too. Is For me, it was as much about building my business and, and finding deals and things like that. Uh, it was as much of that as it was just making this a less lonely business. It's kind of a lonely business if you're out there with your head down just doing your thing, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, love so. being around people and helping them. Yeah. I mean, when I came from corporate America, I, you know, we had happy hours. You're interacting with people all day long. And then when you become a real estate investor, you're interacting with contractors and stuff, but they're not necessarily like people that are, that have the same interests as you. I mean, they're helping you facilitate things, but, and by the way, my contractor has become a really good friend of mine, my general contractor. Uh, But that's rare. Like usually I think it's like, you know, my, I'll, I'll go years without talking to my uh, granite guy other than a text message, like go measure one, two, three main street. And he sends me a price and I say, get it done. Some of my contractors, we worked together for years before I ever met them uh, physically. But anyway, Hey, let's That's get this started. <laughs> yeah. So Holly, tell us, tell us your background. Tell us a little bit more about, about who you are. Sure. Well, my way, way back, background background <laughs> was that I was an accountant I was a CPA, fresh out of school, worked at Ernst & Young, in my little cubby, not a lot of interactions with people. Mm. I guess it was my cubby, cubicle, that's the right word, you know, in my little fortress. And um, worked as a CPA five years, and when the most exciting part of my day would be to get on the phone and say, Mr. Hambright, we're missing a few pieces of information for your tax return. Can you tell me um, when I can get those and what they are and blah, blah, blah. And the phone would go down like, oh my gosh, I'm all alone again. Me grinding and crunching my numbers. It was not a fun job choice for me who likes to talk to people. Yep. And um, fast forwarding, you know, I got married, had a few babies, four kids. Um, uh-huh. When the baby went off to kindergarten, and I wasn't needed to be the full-time mommy so much. I started doing real estate deals with my husband. And um, our first deal was a land deal. Got it entitled and sold it to a builder. So it wasn't a house flip, but that was his forte. He worked for home builders and new land. Mm. So flipped a piece of land, made a big chunk of money. He quit his job. And then we dove into house flipping full-time. Awesome. Went really well for a while because we were trained and taught um, how to buy the courthouse steps, uh, trustee sales. So in yeah. California, they're happening very often. They still are. That worked really well for a few years for the first hundred or so houses. Then these big hedge funds moved in with hundreds of millions of dollars, pushed us little guys out that were working with a few million dollars. Yeah. And it was time to adapt and change or 
be done and die. <laughs> right. So uh, my husband turned to me and said, you're kind of social. You like to talk to people. Go find us some houses. Go network with realtors. Go find deals. Okay. I was plenty excited to do that. Yep. And it worked out really well. So since that time, we've bought over 100 houses all through networking, never through direct mail. Not that I have wow. anything against that. I know it works really well for a lot of people, but I haven't need to. So it's, it's just been a fun ride. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so you don't do any, do you do, do you do any traditional marketing at all? Direct mail, pay-per-click, like anything like that? Not yet. I yeah. have considered the pay-per-click, but even this year, I've just been, as I've been wanting more deals, I thought, why don't I just connect with the wholesalers that are already doing that? Yeah. That's, to me, it's almost like a whole other business. I know you do it all and do it really well, but I don't have enough. It is a whole. Uh, it is a whole other business. Yeah, finding deals. I mean, even networking for you, it's really is a business, right? You have a lot of activities around doing that, but it's it's a uh, you know it's a whole other business in regard of if you're not doing direct uh, direct if you're not directly marketing to customers, um, then you don't have to have somebody sitting around waiting to answer the phone. You know, you don't have to have some of those functions of setting up appointments. And so we have, you know, I have an office manager that is effectively a dispatcher. She grabs information. We hire, an, we have an acquisitions guy that goes out to make offers. And so that whole piece is kind of unique to wholesaling. Like if you're networking and finding deals and uh, even buying from other wholesalers, you don't have to have that kind of those act. Not, you know, you don't have to. It's it's just different. It's a different animal, right? Right. And the way I view it, right or wrong, is I'm either going to pay for it with the cost of direct mail and the cost of people or somebody answering the phone and somebody going and negotiating deals in that way, or I can pay a wholesaler to do all that stuff for me. Yeah. So, I mean, now I do buy some stuff from wholesalers in that way, but the bulk of my deals has come through realtors. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And for some people, you know, like you, you like to socialize, you like to go meet people. There's some investors that don't want to do that or they don't have they in their mind at least they don't have the time for it they would rather just uh dump money into direct mail and kind of outsource the whole thing and teach people how to do it and create the processes but they just say well i don't want to i don't want to have to to use a quote from office space they don't want to have to deal with the goddamn customers <laughs> <laughs> i love it yeah yeah that's so, true and you know in speaking of that do what you like. I mean, if yep. you don't like any of that, then don't force yourself. Right? Yeah, like, for sure. Is not a social outgoing person. It's so painful for him. Yeah. Um, it's fine. I don't force him into it. Like, I'll go network. I'll go to the parties. And you just stay home and watch Deadliest Catch or whatever you do. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about that networking to find deals. So just talk about kind of, you know, why you do that, why you chose that path. And uh, I know you talked a little bit about it already, your courthouse uh, stuff kind of dried up, but just maybe explain a little bit more about what, what that means and then maybe get into some ways that you network. Are you looking to change your life through real estate investing? If you're interested in either getting started or taking your business to the next level, please check out FlipNerd's private program at theinvestormachine.com. This is the most robust real estate investor coaching, networking, and mastermind on the planet and designed for your success. If you're ready to roll up your sleeves, ready to take personal responsibility for your own success, and ready to dive into a world-class instructional coaching program that provides you step-by-step -step instruction to help you achieve financial freedom, then you should apply today. Spaces are limited and candidates are only considered after an application and interview process. Our 12-month investor program is unparalleled. Think you might be a fit? Learn more today at theinvestormachine.com. What that means, and then maybe get into some ways that you network. Sure. Well, my number one piece of advice would be to like, oh, I wish I had a pair of sunglasses or any kind of glasses right now. Oh, you got all these glasses in your logo. But yeah. to put on your deal finding glasses. You know, yeah. On. I learned to um, be always on the lookout for deals and make it about the person I'm talking to. So let me explain what that means. I mean, I remember a few times I, if I'm pulling into a grocery store or something and I see a realtor with a name badge or a car magnet, 
I'll just go up to them. And I'm sure they thought I was a little nuts, but, oh, hi, your name's Susie, you're a realtor? Yeah, well, I am a cash buyer investor. I'm always looking for realtors to be on my team and help me find houses that I can buy, fix, and flip. Um, does that sound like it would be of interest to you? He said, oh, yeah, sure. Well, let me tell you real briefly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a house that I can add value to. I'm looking for something that's either outdated or maybe it had fire or mold or any kind of problem just really ugly or smells bad, anything like that. So when you're out in your you know, realtor world or showing clients or broker preview and you see homes like that, think of me. And just to give you a general idea, I need to buy it about 70 to 80% of the after repaired value. So if a house would sell for 500,000, which is a starter house in Southern California. Yeah. If a house would sell for 500,000, you take that times you know, 80%, 400,000, and I do the math, Mike, because not everybody's a math whiz, so I do it. 500,000 times 80% would be 400,000. So if I could buy it for about 400,000, you know, that would be a potential deal for me. Yeah. So here's my card. You know, I have my heart with my, my card with my pink hard hat on me, you know, photo of me, so they remember me. And I even just, I saw someone this week when I handed her my card. Oh yeah, I remember you. You're the pink hard hat lady. Like I am yeah. out there being known for the pink hard hat. And it's just a great way. And then I get their information. And if I, you know, sometimes I followed up with emails and texts. I need to be much better at that because I have a huge database of realtors. Yeah. I just talk to people. Yep. Imagine and, that, talking to people. <laughs> and then the step for non-realtors I mean, realtors are motivated. Oh, and then I also, I used to say, I will buy it with you and I will resell it with you. You're guaranteed two commissions. And I did that for, you know, a long time till the last yeah. year or so. Now the market's gotten so competitive that I can't offer that. I say, I will buy it with you. You'll represent me as the buyer. And if there's enough profit in the deal, I will have you represent me on the resale too, which I did one like that this year. Yeah. It worked, but I can't always guarantee that. But I want them to feel my genuine concern for them and that I want them to make money. It's not yep. about me, take, take, take. It's like, I want you to be successful. I'd love to do 10 or more deals with you. And then they feel that and they love it. So if I can then jump over to the non-realtor. Sure, so, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've got those, those glasses on, my radar up listening. And I'll tell a little quick story about my daughter's club volleyball owner. One time I was talking about sponsoring the team and, you know, trying to pay her fees in a tax advantage way through the sponsorship, you know, that whole kind of thing. He mentioned something like, oh yeah, well, I can get a, a banner for you at my real estate sign company. What? Are you a realtor? And he said, yeah, but I'm not really active. I'm like, oh, well, I'm a flipper and always looking for houses, but do you, you know, did that little spiel. Do you know anything or, or are you aware of any homes? He goes, well, yeah, there's one next door to me. Oh, okay, great. I mean, I was down, I mean, I happened at nine in the morning, we were down looking at the house at another couple hours later. It's in Laguna Beach, California. And um, I think that house eventually sold for $770,000 and it was 700 square feet. Got a lot of that. Oh my God. <laughs> but I mean, this guy, you know, I just, you know, was thinking and brought up, oh, are you a realtor? Do you know a realtor? And if the person isn't a realtor, I throw a financial incentive at them. Yeah. Like if yeah. I, I say, hey, if you leave me to any house I can buy, I'll give you at least 500 bucks, hopefully more, depending on the deal. So then they have motivation to, have their you know glasses on and radar up looking for ugly houses. Absolutely, yeah. So how do you how do you so one thing as a realtor that's a that's a natural person to kind of try to network with in our space, right? But what about like when you said non realtors, other than just kind of overhearing somebody say something about real estate, like how do you identify that person? Like, is there kind of a group of people like you could say maybe uh, code compliance officers or? general contractors or, you know, kind of group, you could kind of group people that some of that stuff makes sense, but are, are there any other kind of groupings of people that you say, I like to go after these or try to associate with, or try to find a networking event where these people are going to be anything else there other than realtors. It's kind of a natural kind of grouping. Yes. So I'll say going to networking groups hmm. is a, 
is another great way. So I'll share another yep. story of a non-realtor, but he was a big networker. And um, yeah, I guess my last story, he did turn out to be a realtor, but I didn't know he was going to be a realtor. <laughs> so this guy is not a realtor, still not a realtor. Joel. I went to a um, professional business networking group, and there's these groups out there around here. We have a lot of what's called BNI, Business Networking yeah. International. Yeah, those are all over, I think, yeah. Yeah, they're worldwide. And there's other networking groups like that. If you go on meetup.com and look for business networking groups, you'll find some in your local area. Yeah. So I was at this group of about 10 people, and instead of doing a up hi, I'm Holly, and I'm a house that we're looking for houses to flip. Instead, I hopped up and said, hey, I know you got, and I knew these guys are all in multiple networking groups. Yeah. And part of their responsibility in that is to pass leads or referrals to other people in the group. I said, you know how you've got realtors in your group and it's so hard to find leads for them because people move only an average of every seven years. Guess what? You've got me. I'm a lead for all the realtors you know. You can pass me as a lead and... If you lead me to a realtor that I do any business with, I'll pay you at least five hundred dollars for you know every deal that they wow. bring me to. Okay, within twenty four hours, this young motivated man Joel had eight agents call me. I couldn't believe it, and I did do deals with two of them. I think I've done I mean, only a total of three deals, but he made money. And you know what else? I capitalized on that when I went to pay him. I said, let's meet up. Um, we met at Chick-fil-A. It was like the, the local place. And I got my husband to film us and we did a Facebook Live. And I counted out my five $100 bills to him. And I had <laughs> my hard hat on and I put it out there. And people remember that. And they talk about it. Like, are you still paying money for houses? Even one of my contractors called me and said, are you paying money to people to find houses? I'm like, okay. You're a crazy dude. I would usually pay you 30 to 40 grand labor. If you want an extra 500 bucks, yeah, I'll give you 500 bucks. Yeah. You think you just want another job. But people watch it on Facebook. So that's my other tip is leverage it. Yeah, Let people yeah. know you're doing it. Show everyone on Facebook, hey, thanks, Joel, for the lead. And I got this house. So Joel that's is awesome. a realtor. <laughs> Yeah, you said something about contractors. That made me think. I, so I have a. I told you I have a really good relationship with my contractor. He's rehabbed probably 150 houses for me, and uh, he asked a couple months ago. He's just like, "Can I?" He. It was his idea. I mean, we've done this in the past, but he's like, "Could I get like a door hanger or something to hang?" You know, when I see houses, I was like, "Yeah." Uh, so you know, we we use call rail and uh, we try. So tracking phone numbers are like two dollars a month. So I just gave him an individual phone number and any leads that come in, we can track back to him. And I ordered him a stack of like 500 you know, door hangers. And I, and basically the deal is like, hey, we, we'll kind of JV on these deals if you find them. But anything that comes through that will be incremental to me because I'm not out doing that, you know, not the way that he is. So uh, there's all sorts of opportunities like that if you just kind of start to think about it, right? Oh, I love that. And then when someone comes and asks, um, would you give me door hangers? Like when people have done that to me, like, Oh, would you want this? I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you're a powerful magnet, Mike, attracting great things. I love it. Well, there's a, it, it, the thing is, is what you're really looking for are if you think of contractors, certainly realtors, those are natural ones. Other sorts of contractors, like in my market, there are a lot of foundation companies. They have a lot of foundation issues here. And they have their ear to the ground of like, you know, there's people that when they find out that they need $20,000 in foundation work, they're just like, well, I think I might just sell it, you know? So it's a natural thing to say, well, bring those leads to me. And by the way, I'll have you do the foundation work, you know, then. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of whatever, whatever market you're in, the people that are listening, there are ways to kind of do that. You just have to, I think the key, you, you would probably agree with this, is you have to kind of not just uh, from from my standpoint, this is what I teach. The art of networking is that that initial contact is not networking. That is meeting somebody. The real art is building that relationship over time, following up. And I know sometimes it gets hard, but just checking in. Hey, how are you doing? Just want to because you, you need to kind of be tapping on their shoulder, like saying, don't forget me. Don't forget me. <laughs> don't forget me. Otherwise, they forget you. Right. Life people, their lives are busy and they move on. They meet lots of people, probably plenty of other people that say that they want them to help them find deals too, right? So you just have to stand out. I know if you have a bubbly personality like you do, you're known as hard hat Holly with a pink hard hat. Like you, there's ways to just stand out from the crowd, right? 
Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can get a different color hard hat, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no pink hard hats because Holly's got that uh, trademark. Uh, they wear pink. And it's mostly men in this business. If they want to wear pink, more power to them. <laughs> I will say that uh, there are a couple people that I've known just in real estate circles that, you know, it's always the guy with the bow tie, right? There's that guy with a bow tie. It's like, okay, that guy always wears a bow tie, which you never forget him, right? And so you know, what, what are some other things that people could do to kind of stand out when they're building relationships so that you they stay top of mind? That's a great question. I mean, the one thing that pops out in my head is, okay, this is mostly men that do this business, and I know that, but maybe just get a shirt with a logo on it. Yeah. Like maybe you always wear a yellow shirt, a green shirt, a blue shirt. I buy houses, like something like that, yeah. and you're wearing it to Home Depot and around town and out to lunch when because you've got to get out of your house if you want to network. It, it's tough. I mean, I guess you can network on Facebook in your house, but other than that, you want to get out there and be seen. So, like a bright, colorful shirt, get a car magnet. Yeah, I think those are great things. I don't really have any other good ideas for guys. Maybe like um, some special little glasses or something. Yeah, well, hey, I, I used to have them right on right my desk here. I have, a, I have like 2,000 Flip Nerd glasses in the back room here right behind me. So, um, But I, I don't really wear them out at events. I'm, there's really not any reason why I don't. I should, but. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, you know, what, what would you say, Holly, about, uh, you know, one of the things that I teach people is, uh, is the way to kind of stay not relevant, but just kind of stay top of mind is to, to teach people. Like I like to stay in touch and say like, Hey, if you want to come watch us rehab this house or here's some before and after pictures or kind of use what you're already doing as a platform as a reason to stay in touch and kind of stay top of mind. So, um, what I've done in the past is I would have a list of people that I'm networking with that I want to kind of build a relationship with. And I would just send them a picture of like, Hey, I just bought this house. Look, the kitchen's all burned out. I mean, you know, uh, and basically just say, if you ever come across anything like this, let me know. But I just thought you'd be interested in, and I'll send you an after picture once we're done rehabbing it or something like that. And I think the more you can do stuff like that, because most people aren't doing that. Right. That's really clever. I haven't done that. So I'll tell you one thing I have done yeah. is I've sent out blast emails just through my Gmail, but I say blast, you know, and I don't have like a big CRM or anything. I think I probably have a couple hundred realtors yep. on the list and I BCC them. I don't let them all see each other's emails. And I will put in there, um, looking for a moldy house. Have you seen one lately? And then the next subject line is, hey, we come across any firehouses lately. Next one is, um, hungry investor with cash needs to buy houses now. Uh, next one is, how any escrows fall through lately on old problem houses? Like, so I would yep. change up the message. Yeah. They might think, oh, I don't know a problem house. Ever. Oh, there was the one with the mold. Like, if you say different words to trigger their mind. Right, right. That can be really powerful. Like, oh, I didn't know Hollywood do a mold house. Oh, okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think just you have to find some way to stay in front of people. Otherwise, you know, everybody has busy lives and they they meet people every day and they go to events and they meet a ton of people and come. Uh, I don't have it with me here, but you, you come back from a networking event and you got a big stack of business cards and you just like you say, well, in your mind, you're like, well, I networked. But a lot of times we put a rubber band around it and like throw it into a drawer. And it's like, well, the relationship's over now if you do that. <laughs> um so yeah, yeah, you spent all that effort and all that time meeting people. You've got that's just where the relationship begins, right? Yes, amen, yeah. brother. You got yeah. you got to stay in touch. And I really love Facebook too. I always think that um, just because I'm not getting like likes and comments, I think oh nobody's really seeing it or whatever. But in real life, when I'm talking networking with people, like oh I love that house you just finished. Oh I love that. Oh I saw you paid that guy the money. I'm like oh wow. Way more people see it. Than yeah. actually interact or respond. So if you're posting on Facebook and it feels like nothing's happening, don't think that's really the truth. Yeah. And you know what? Even if I don't have like the most awesome thing to post, I want when people are like scrolling through that newsfeed. Oh, there's Holly. You know, that's like, oh, there's Holly. Because I've heard it said, you know, it used to be that in the marketing world, it took seven to eight touches before a consumer would respond to a marketing right. message, and that's why 
in the old days of magazines. I remember learning this. You would flip a magazine page and three pages in a row, there'd be the Dove ad. And you're like, why is it over and over and over? Because they're trying to hit you. <laughs> now I've heard it's 14 to 15 touches with oh, all wow. the ads that are constantly grabbing our attention. So just be in that newsfeed. You know, I'm in my pink card ad in someone's newsfeed. I want them to remember. So when they go, oh, do you know, you know, someone, someone's you know complaining about their problem tenants or something oh that pink hard hat lady who is that again you know hard hat holly and, and yeah be really powerful i have got deals through facebook yeah that's great advice and i, I tell people the same thing one of the challenges with you probably found you, you know this now because you've done it so much but when you go network this is what i've told people if you go to like a real estate club or somewhere else to meet people it's a long, it's a long-term play, right? You're not, you're never going to say, hi, I'm Mike and I buy houses and you're going to meet a realtor and they say, I have a house for you right now. Here's the contract. Can you sign it? You're like, yes, done deal. And I went to a networking event and I got a deal out of it tonight. Like it doesn't work that way. Like it, you know, what happens is over time, if you build that relationship, then they're going to come across a house with mold or a burnout or something else. And they're, and the key is to make sure that they think of you, but so for, for us as Americans, we want immediate gratification. Right? I want to take a pill and lose like 40 pounds overnight. And uh, you know we want all those things to happen right away. But I mean, you would agree with that, right? Networking is kind of a long-term play and it takes, it takes uh, work to continue to do those things, right? Definitely. And along that same line, if I can add to it, make sure that you are acting in integrity because you know being a long-term play and I think everybody knows this. It takes a long time to build a reputation of trust and quality and integrity that people know they can trust you. They might see if you're still hanging out at the real estate club a few months from now, you know, those wholesalers and stuff. But it only takes, you know, one bad action or you yeah. screwing one wholesaler not paying him to ruin your reputation. Right. I'm always the one that acts in integrity. I mean, there's been at least once, maybe twice, where we paid three commissions instead of two on deals because we wanted these realtors to all be happy. <clears throat> Everybody that was, you know, involved in the deal wanted to get paid and like, well, we'll just pay three commissions. It was a fat deal. And guess what? My reputation was like, I got bonus points. And then this realtor right. that we did that with brought us back more deals. So make yeah. sure that you are being a good guy. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Any tips on, uh, you alluded to it a little bit there, not that the tip is to always pay more <laughs> commissions out, but any tips on how to get repeat business uh, when, when you've gotten it from somebody, like to how to incentivize that person to come back again and any tips there? Sure. Now, mine are all realtors. My, I should say my networking is almost always with either realtors directly or people that lead me to realtors because the realtors are usually the ones that know about the deals. Yeah. So the friends and relatives of the realtors are often, you know, leading me to deals. And I just make myself an easy customer for that realtor. So they'll bring me back more and more deals. Sure. I show them total, you know, respect and trust. I think I've only had one realtor in, 200 deals that I've done that's been really bad that I thought, oh, she was so awful. I could never do business with her again. But I show a lot of respect and appreciation to the agents that are doing deals with me. You know, a lot of them, before I got my license a couple of years ago, would relist. Yeah. I'd relist with them and I would you know, ask their opinion and want their opinion on what's the right level of finish and what are the right finishes for this area, this city. I would ask them, Hey, give me showing reports, your opinion on price. And then I would be responsive when they asked me for things too. So just be an easy, nice client yeah. for the realtor. And then they're like, wow, Holly was, I mean, I remember one agent when I called her to relist the house, she's like, oh my gosh, Holly. I go, what? She goes, I can't believe you're really relisting with me. I'm like, you brought me the deal. I told you that's what it was. Oh, but Holly, people just, they don't do that. They don't, yeah. they don't give it to you again. I'm like, well, I do. I mean, and then. You know, she got me a couple more houses after that. So right, right. It's always nice to surprise them in pleasant ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, and a lot of times it, it, you'd agree with this, I'm sure. You know, relisting and giving somebody a commission, especially in California where the you know the sales dollars are big, um, it is obviously people would love that, right? But you would there aren't just some little things you can do. Like I I had one sitting right here on my desk, and I just moved it right before we started. 
but just getting like a thank you card. I got a nice thank you card from somebody that um, was like wax sealed, you know, this little wax seal wow. thing. It's like, it doesn't, it, it turns out it, you could buy those things on Amazon for 20 bucks. It doesn't take that much effort, but it's like, it just, when you see it, you're like, oh, this is awesome. I'm so thoughtful, you know? And, uh, it, but you would agree. There's probably little things you can do like that to wow people because so many people don't do that. Right. Oh yeah. And personally, I get pretty excited about a Starbucks card. If someone gives me a $5 <laughs> Starbucks card or if I win it, like, and I'm not even a coffee drinker, but I still like to go to Starbucks. There's lots of other delicious treats and fun drinks yeah, that yeah. we have. And I get so excited about that. It's so dumb. Like, why am I so excited about our $5 Starbucks card? But it's just like, yeah, it, it, it's really nice. Yeah. 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 It doesn't take much to be thoughtful. And I think sometimes people forget that how far those little things can go, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I'll give you my address where you can mail my Starbucks card. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, if you're, a, you know, anyone listening, like, who can you send a five dollar Starbucks card today that did something great for you that you might want to get repeat business from or more referrals from? Because guess what, you are going to stand out there. Like a lender one time was trying to get more business from me. It was on the other side of a transaction, and, and this was a retail, kind of a retail deal. You know, client said. Can you do a mini renovation on my house before I resell it, Holly Realtor? I'm like, yeah, sure. And I did it. But this lender gave me a $5 Starbucks card at the end, said, I hope I you know, did well and would love to be able to sit down and meet with you. Guess what? I felt really obligated to go sit down and meet with yeah. him. And I, was, and I remember him. He's the only lender I've ever known to do that. And I remember Matt Katie, great job. You know, I mean, he stands out in my mind. So Yeah, you, know, you remember those out. things. Yeah. yeah. That's what I say. I, I teach this about net, when I teach uh, about networking, you know, I've, I've kind of told some people that are listening may have heard this story before because I've definitely said it a few times where it's been a little while. So maybe you haven't heard it is if you go to a real estate investing event and you fill your, let me see if I can find something here. I'm going to go off, uh, off script a little bit. When you'd like some little background music. Too. You come back from a networking event and you've got this, like this big stack of like business cards, right? And then you, like I said, put a rubber band around and throw it in the door drawer. That's what most people do. But if you take those cards and even if you have a virtual assistant, you could lay like 10 cards out and just like take a picture of it and say, Hey, put these in a spreadsheet for me or put them in a database or even, you know, send them a message for me, but just send them a message. It basically just says, Hey, it was really great to meet you last night. Just want to remind you uh, that, you know, if you ever come across this or that I'm looking and just, just some, it happens so rarely that when you meet somebody that they kind of acknowledge it the following day that people remember that, you know, it's just, it's such a little thing. Like, I can't believe you wrote me like, you know, but uh, it stands out, right? Because so few people are doing that. They just kind of move on and uh, do the next thing. I have something to add to that that I started yeah, yeah. doing just in the last couple of weeks. So it does require a smartphone and it requires the receiver to have a smartphone. But I think most of us are at that level. Yep. So I um, will have a contact in my phone of myself. Like most phones have you saved. So I put a picture on that. I have one since I have two identities. There's Holly McKinn Realtor and then there's Hard Hat Holly. Yeah, when I'm the house buyer, I put a picture in that contact for Holly McCann with the pink hard hat because people remember that. And I think I am trying to remember what I made my name like. Holly McCann, cash buyer, flipper, something like that. Yeah. So after I meet someone, I send them a text, hey, great to meet you. I've been doing this with realtors lately. Uh, remember, I'm a cash buyer, would love to buy a house from you and have you represent me. And I attach the contact. I'm like, here's a contact, just touch it to download it. Awesome. Smartphones do that. So then, like, what was that girl? Like, if they, whatever, they're going to remember me. It was like cash buyer, investor, flipper, whatever. I think I put yeah. all three of those words. So if they're searching in their contacts, they're going to find me that way. Because otherwise, like, I might heard some networking thing. I don't oh, what was her name? I know she had a hard hat, but yeah, it's gone. So yeah. send people your contact info with a nice note, not just like, here's my contact, download it. Hey, would love to do business with you. Or right. Like, That's awesome. We can make money together. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we've been sharing some tips here. Are, are there any other, for folks that are just looking to get started, sometimes this can get overwhelming. Uh, wh where would you recommend that they just start networking um, to try to find deals? Any, any kind of guidance there? 
Hmm, I can say so many different things. Well, I think a great thing to do is to search out people who are the outgoing, connected people with lots of friends. They could be people at um, your church or your kid's school or formal networking groups or chamber of commerce. Sure. Look for the mic, look for the holly in the room. Who seems to, because people with our personalities are usually really excited to meet more new people. The yeah. great thing about that is you're leveraging their contacts. So wherever you're going to choose the soccer field or whatever, look for the chatty Kathy or the chatty Charlie, who seems to be in the know and have lots of friends and ask them who they know that either has a problem house with tenants or who do they know that are realtors because it also has a lot of power when you're like a third party referral, like somebody else is introducing you. It has, it has great power. So yeah. say you have Chatty Charlie on the soccer field, who's friends with everybody, and you go meet him and tell him what you're looking for and say, who do you know that is a realtor or who do you know that's a property manager or whatever? Right. When he introduces, people already like him and like, oh, well, I like Chatty Charlie, so Holly must be a good person to know too. So right. look for somebody with lots of friends and you can network anywhere, really. Yeah. You can go to the realtor meetings and boards I never had huge success, but, but let me say one thing about that. I found a lender who was super outgoing and networky. And I asked him, who are the realtors you know that are doing a lot of business? And he's like, I will take you around and introduce you. It was awesome. I got these nice little bakery cookies, made cute little bags with bows. It was like a little stack of six cookies, nothing big. He took me to realtor offices around town. And one of those realtors, I ended up buying three houses with some of my most profitable deals because I was being introduced by John. John's like, oh, this is Holly. She's an investor flipper. She's looking to buy houses. Do you have anything right now, Michelle? You know, blah, blah, blah. Well, Michelle ended up bringing me houses. So the power of being introduced by the other yeah. network people is awesome. And ask who are the players? Who are the people in the know? I mean, that's a great thing to do. Too. That yeah. Out really well for me. Awesome. Awesome. That's great information. So Holly, um, if, if folks want to reach out to you, I know you have a podcast as well. Tell us, give us some links where people can go learn more about you. Sure. And you can find my podcast on iTunes and all the podcast player apps. It's called secrets to real estate investing. And you'll see me in my pink hard hat. I used to be afraid funny enough that if people saw the podcast cover art, that I was a girl, no one would listen, but um, I decided it was okay. So I changed my logo from the blue and green houses, nondescript thing, to the pink hard hat. I'm owning it. There you that. go, yeah. And my website is um, hardhatholly.com. And from there, you can link to my podcast. On the homepage of hardhatholly.com, you can get my free download with great networking tips. So some of this awesome. stuff and even more. Because networking and talking to people is a great way to start in this business. So yeah. and you can email me there. I'm happy to talk and share if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Hey, this is great information. We'll, we'll add the links down below the, in the show notes here for anybody that's watching it uh, on flipner.com. So Holly, appreciate you joining us today. Great to see you. Great to see you too. And I've got to say one more thing. If you're in Southern California and you got Deals, their houses, your wholesaler, sell me some houses. There I you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Awesome, well, everybody. Hey, this is episode number uh, 366 with uh, Holly McCann. Great uh, information on networking. So appreciate you joining us today. Appreciate you being a listener of Flip Nerd. By the way, if you're not uh, an active subscriber, please go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio, anywhere else, uh, Google Play, anywhere else where you might watch it at watch or listen at and subscribe. And by the way, I don't think I said this in 366 episodes. We actually get an insane amount of views on our YouTube channel. We put all of our shows on our YouTube channel. I've never actually publicly said that before, but we get a massive amount of views on uh, YouTube. So if, you, if you're not uh, subscribed out there, you can subscribe on YouTube as well. So appreciate everybody for being a loyal follower. Thanks again, Holly, for being with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the flipner.com investing show. If you're not yet an elite member of flipner, you're missing out. 
We have tons of great training, including a new detailed masterclass published each month and live training webinars with experts twice a month. Plus, you'll get access to all of our archives where we already have a growing library of masterclasses and other training videos. Elite members also get membership in our incredible online mastermind group, where many of the top real estate investors from across the country, including many of the hundreds of guests I've had on the show in the past, are already members. Whether you're brand new, looking to get started, or a veteran, you simply must join today. I promise you won't be disappointed. To learn more or join today, please visit flipnerd.com slash lab. That's flipnerd.com slash lab. See you on the next show.